Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Pause. Today, I've got a special one for you. Instead of doing a Shelly Art Bloom, I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to try a style of pour called a Dutch pour. A Dutch pour, traditionally, is a lot thinner than a bloom. It's often the thinnest style of pour painting that we do, and it involves being, uh, pouring your paints onto the surface and then blowing them out with a hairdryer. Now, I don't have a hairdryer that's a uh, low enough setting that's going to blow the paint but not blow it straight off the canvas, so I'm going to try and blow this out using just my mouth. I've attempted this style once before and it didn't work out so well. So I'm following a YouTuber called Canela Soraco's recipe. I'll put a link to her video in the description box below. She's awesome at Dutch pours and uh, yeah, so I'm going to try out her recipe as I have all those ingredients on hand and we're going to see how it goes. I'm also doing a little bit of experimenting, trying to use this little piggy pigments in the Dutch pours to see how they fare. And I'll be playing around with those to make sure that they work. Uh, in my Dutch pours and finding a way that they will work and hold their, their shimmer and shine. So yeah, just a bit of a play around today, so I'll take you down onto the canvas and let's start painting. Okay, so here I have a painting that I'm going to pour over. This was my first attempt at a Dutch pour, and I really had no idea what I was doing at the time, and it was just a bit of a play around to see if the pigments would work. I only mixed them with water, and I did get a pour, but it's not the Best. So, um, like I said, I'm following Canela's recipe today. Uh, it works for her, so we're going to see if it works for me. So, if you want to buy any of the This Little Piggy pigments, you can find them at fluid-art.co. And if you want to take Shelly's course uh, to learn how to do blooms, you can do that at shellyart.com.au. So, for this recipe, Canela recommends to mix up using 80 grams of Floetrol, 40 grams of paint, and 30 grams of water. So that's what I've got here in my cups. I've got my white base mixed up in this old varnish bottle. I have a purple by Chromacryl. I have a teal by Chromacryl. I've got this little piggy Groovy, which is this brilliant neon pink. I have this little piggy Glisten, which is an interference blue-green color. And I have this little piggy Blue Eyes, which is an awesome baby blue. So I've picked these colours so that I can see how they're all interacting on the canvas and decide how they, uh, see how they dry uh, when they're dry, I guess. So yeah, so with a Dutch pour, let me just put on some gloves first. I hate being messy. So I'll put my gloves on and then we can begin. Now with a Dutch pour, you would usually flood the canvas first with what we call a flood coat. So I'm going to do that. And now I do know that because I'm pouring over black and I'm using white that I'm going to be able to see the black, the white through the, or I'm gonna see the pour underneath through the white. I'm okay with that. I'm just wanting to see if I can do a Dutch pour basically. I'm just going to use a spatula or my stir stick to spread this out. Canela uses a really big spatula, which is a great idea. And this has got a ton of bubbles in it because I shook it up. But again, not too fussed about bubbles as I'm just testing this out. And I don't want that cushion of paint to be too thick that base layer. I know it will be in the center because this canvas isn't stretched drum tight, but it is so strange to me working with paints that are so very thin. Just making sure the edges are covered. Okay. Now Let's try, we'll torch our base first, just using a chef's torch here, working that over the surface. That's popped a lot of those bubbles already. This is such a different technique because normally we wouldn't torch our blooms. Okay, unless we really needed to. We'll blob something in there, take that Okay, so looking pretty good so far. Now I'm going to layer on my colours. Let's see, how do I want to layer them? Let's try... 
sort of swipey thing. Let's see if we can go this way. So very, very thin. Okay. Making up pink. Going to do blue eyes next. And then glisten. So I'm doing the interference pigment on top to give it the best chance of being seen. Now I have no idea if this is enough paint on there, if it's too much, but we're gonna see how this goes. So I'm just gonna blow it out using my mouth. So excuse my head. Wow. I got so many cells. It seems like there is a lot of paint left on this canvas, so I may have to do this again with a much thinner flood coat. But let me see. Sometimes they torch the cells. So let's see what that does. Oh, okay. So I lost a lot of my neon pink. But I have plenty of teal. So. I think there's way too much paint on this canvas and I think it's going to either crack when it dries or it's going to shift. So I'm going to scrape this paint into a tin, into a container. And let's see if we can make this work for us. using a cake scraper to scrape it all up. So I think it doesn't help that my canvas isn't stretched tight. But what I might do is spray the back with water and tighten that up. I'll just use a different one for now. Or I might just leave it and see if that makes a difference but I definitely think I had too much paint on there now my paints did sell up really quickly I'm not sure if you all saw that um, I had hundreds of tiny little cells so I'm thinking that maybe what I need to do is thicken up my paints a little bit. That might help as well. Because they did look like they spread and blended very easily. So let's do one and then let's try this again. Going to put as much on this time 
and I will use my cake spreader to even that out. Now the canvas is level, so if it does sink into the middle, it's because the actual canvas itself isn't drum tight. Turn that off. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, got a torch first. Get rid of those bubbles. I'm going to try putting a little less on the canvas. But I did want more of this pink, so I'll put a little bit more there. Oop. again. Ooh, I like this. Okay, this one looks much better. Less paint definitely helped. I'm going to torch this little area here. There we go. Just to open that up. But I think that looks pretty good. Right, let's go down for a detailed shot. I don't know if you can see all that. Oops. But... looking pretty good. So I've got some really nice cells all the way around the edge and amazing lacing and I've never seen that with a Dutch pour before and I have a feeling it's all got to do with the Australian flow troll and that just shows you that there is something in this that makes cells like crazy. So what I may do is I'm going to thicken up my paints a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, heavy gloss gel to those to thicken them up or I might add a little bit more paint. With the pigments, I'm going to just add the gel. And with the paints, I'll add a little bit more paint to that, thicken them up a little bit, and we'll see if that makes a difference. So I'll put this one aside to dry, and we'll be right back. All right, and we are back. So I've thickened up my paints a little bit, just added a little bit more paint to each of these, and we're going to give this another go. So I'm going to pull down the base layer of white again not adding too much I'll spread that out with my cake spreader just making sure all the edges are covered Bit 
difficult because I can't see at the back. do. Okay, torch the bubbles. Again, I'm not overly fussed with getting these perfect. I'm just checking, finessing a recipe that will work for me with my products and trying this little piggy pigments in something a little bit different than a blue. Okay, I'll just scrape the drips up off my other painting. Just get that there. And just do a quick coat of the sides. To me, this still looks really, really thin. So, I just have to see how this goes. Okay. Start off with our purple. I'm going to put this a little bit lower this time. I'm actually really surprised at how far this paint spreads, and it makes sense because it is so much thinner. So we're going to layer color on because I seem to be losing that one. I'm going to add a little bit more pink. Okay, so my pink is sinking, which tells me that I've made that one a little bit too thick. But we're going to see how this plays out. Alright, and I feel like I've already got too much paint on there, but let's go for it. something really interesting happening in this corner here. What I've done is I've just gone and looked for areas that look like they had a lot of paint there. I'll go over those. Let me see if I can break up this bit a bit more. There we go. Okay. So this one doesn't look overly terrible. Not, uh, it's not amazing. It's not horrid. Uh, I definitely want to use less of the teal because that's really taking over. So I've got another two canvases set up. And before I move this, I'm going to scrape the drips. So I've got another two canvases taped up. This one is ready to go over here and I've already made sure that it was level on my drying table. So let's go with this one. And this is where using disposable plastic bowls comes in handy. Because I can just throw them away when I'm done. But I do reuse them if I can. Okay, where is my level? Let's get that. Okay, so this side's a little bit high. Now it's a little bit low. <laughs> oh, I can't. Okay, that'll be fine. 
fine. And that'll be fine. So as long as your drying area is level, this area doesn't matter so much. Let's just pull that on in the center. And spread it out this one. It should look better because the canvas is nice and tight. And it's new, so I'm not going to have any of that black design showing up through. Okay. Run my finger around. Make sure the edges are covered. I definitely think my paints are too thin. Because the paint doesn't adhere to the sides. They don't look painted. Whereas when I see Canela do it, her edges, the paint adheres. Uh, it looks solid. This is sort of patchy and really strange. So, the next mix that I do, I'm going to omit the water entirely and just use the flow troll. And I have a feeling it is the flow troll because I've heard people say that the Australian flow troll is much thinner than the American stuff. So, that could be the reason why. Now, Let's do the teal first, and I'm going to do a very minimal amount of that so it doesn't take over. The pink, I'm going to thin slightly. Still looks a little thick. Blue eyes is definitely too thick and sometimes the problem with this is you can leave your paints out and they can thicken naturally and I think that's what's happened here as well especially if you've used something like the heavy gel like I have awful lot of paint there so I've got to blow all of that off. Okay, let's go again. Not great this time. Just trying to find where all my paint went. Let's torch it and find out, shall we? Maybe this one I didn't add enough paint. It's really interesting. I'm so used to being able to pick up the piece and tilt it that trying to leave it be is really <laughs> difficult. Okay. Move this one aside. And bring over my other one, which is exactly the same. And give this one last go. Spray, cake scraper, spreader, whatever you want to call this, a spatula, lifter, flipper, something. Definitely think it needs to be thicker.
corner. Okay. Alrighty, it might just be my technique that's a bit crap. <laughs> I don't know. And I might as well torch bubbles once I've got everything on here. Gonna add more paint. This canvas is a little bit bigger than the last ones. Blue eyes, and now the Gleason. I really don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm just having fun. <laughs> and it's so interesting to try something new. So let's uh, torch it before I forget. All right, I've got some really interesting things happening in this one. Torch it to find some of those cells. Ooh. Ooh, fancy. Okay. I like. A couple of bubbles there from where I picked up paint from underneath. Just put it down. Okay. So there's another Dutch pour. Now, one thing I was looking for with the little piggy pigments is one, can you still see them on top? And yes, I can still see the blue eyes. You can see that running across there. And are they still sparkly? So it's a bit difficult to tell when they're wet because they're mixed in with everything else. But when they're dry, you should really be able to tell the difference. Now, obviously, my blowout needs work and I need to fix the consistency, I think. But I'm not displeased with these. So let's see how they dry. And yeah, I'll give my mixes a bit of a tweak. And we'll come back and see how these look. Okay, so there are some Dutch pours, something I've never tried before. Well, I tried once and failed miserably, so I just sort of gave up and left it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to save these paints and I will put them aside for now. Tomorrow I'll come back, see how these are drying. I might thicken the paints up and give it another go. Um, but yeah, we'll see how everything turns out. To thicken them up, I think it's just a matter of adding some more, uh, adding some more of the paint obviously to thicken it up and some more of that gloss gel um, but yeah we'll see how they dry come back tomorrow and hopefully I'll be able to post the dry results for you if you like what I'm doing here don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one guys bye <laughs>